Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the News at 10 on Channels Television. A reminder of our top stories. More prominent Nigerians weigh in on the face-off between the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and the Group Managing Director of the NNPC and its implications for the nation's oil and gas industry. Fifty years after what some now call the infamous Asaba massacre, survivors reflect on the incident. Federal Polytechnic Adukiti shut down indefinitely following a violent protest by students over the death of their colleague. And over 300,000 people gather in Barcelona for a rally against Catalonia's independence from Spain. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device. Log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from the respective stores. Having the Channels TV and Channels 24 apps will give you access to news and updates. You also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu, and please follow the instructions. Well, let's go now to some of the pictures that you sent in. Let's begin with this one uh, from Tombia Extension Phase 2 GRA of Port Harcourt, showing a physically challenged man controlling traffic. Our eyewitness reporter is commending the man and calls others to take a cue from it. Our next image is from Idumogo Anyocha in Delta State, showing this thatched roofed building, which our eyewitness reporter says is a primary school. He laments the unease pupils and teachers go through during classes, calling on the state government to do more to improve the standard of the building to enhance learning and teaching. From Karua Namoda in Sokoto comes this image of a badly loaded vehicle. While some passengers are sitting dangerously on top of the car, others are sitting in the open trunk. Our eyewitness wants uh, men of the Federal Road Safety Corps to do more in stopping such acts. Well, finally, is this picture from Agege Motor Road by Olusha bus stop in Mushing area of Lagos State, showing the bad shape of the road. Our eyewitness reporter wants the state government to come to their aid as the road has become a nightmare. We thank you for sending those pictures and ask that you please keep them coming. The monkeypox epidemic, first detected in Bayasa State, appears to have spread to neighboring south-south states, the latest being a choir bomb. But one confirmed case has been recorded in the state, while two other suspected cases are under investigation. This latest outbreak has been confirmed in a statement by the choir bomb state commissioner for information and strategy, Mr. Charles Udo. He is urging residents to avoid excessive handshakes, abstinence from eating bush meat and regular hand washing. The statement further explains a disease which has no known treatment or vaccine exhibits similar symptoms to smallpox, but milder with larger rashes appearing on the skin. The first reported cases of the monkeypox outbreak were recorded in the Fangbei area of Bayelsa State last week Thursday, where 13 people were hospitalized and 49 suspected cases quarantined. In the meantime, next door neighbour Cross River State is already bracing up for a possible outbreak of monkeypox following the reported cases in neighbouring Aquaibum State. Well, the state's Commissioner for Health, Dr. Inyang Ashibong, says part of the preventive efforts is a strict surveillance of communities bordering Nigeria and Cameroon. This response says becomes necessary as Cross River plays host to different species of wild monkeys with over 50% of Nigeria's rainforest preserved in the state. Cross River State, also known as the nation's paradise, is home to a variety of wild monkeys. It's also home to majority of Nigeria's rainforest reserves. But what constitutes a terrestrial paradise in the state is also becoming a cause for concern. Cross River State is the home of is the home to so many variety of 
wild monkeys because we have 58 percent of the rainforest in Nigeria preserved in Cross River State. So we are taking extra care, extra precaution to make sure that monkeypox does not get to Cross River State because it's already in South South Nigeria. Since the recent outbreak of the well-known monkeypox disease in neighboring Bielsa State, the government has been on high alert, sensitizing the citizens on the prevention of this disease. Very important for us is the fact that all our staff have to be out on outreach this week into the rural areas where they would be one, educating people on how to prevent monkeypox, one of which is washing their hands clean with soap or ash, and another is avoiding eating meat that has not been properly cooked. Coming in contact with animals, even after they are dead, infected animals could get them infected. Coming in contact with infected persons, even by having them sneeze and then they shake hands with them, they could equally get infected. The state governor's wife, who is also a medical doctor, emphasizes the importance of maintaining proper hygiene towards preventing various diseases. This, in fact, is one way of transmitting, uh, of preventing the transmission from man to man. If you wash your hands, because we touch each other, we shake hands, we do a lot of things, you don't know who already has monkeypox. But if you wash your hands regularly, you are sure that at least you have washed off whatever you have picked up. Although it's been reported that the monkeypox is not deadly, all hands remain on deck as health workers across the state promote the Global Hand Washing Day, creating awareness on the message. And staying with the monkeypox outbreak, the federal government says there is no truth in reports linking it with the outbreak of monkeypox in the country through its free medical care. The Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, who described the report as fake and sinister, says the current outbreak could have been linked to someone who contacted it by eating monkey meat. In a statement, Mr. Mohammed says, quote, the federal government has not conducted any free medical service or care in either Bayelsa or River States, as alleged in the fake report being circulated. So that could not have been the cause of the outbreak of monkeypox in both states, end of quote. He, however, assured of government's efforts to curtail the spread of the disease. Well, joining us on the News at 10 now is Dr. Mudupe Akinka, a consultant, public health physician and lecturer at the Lagos State College of Medicine. Uh, indeed, you are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. All right. Wednesday last week, we woke to the news of um, a disease called monkeypox. We've had several interviews with experts uh, about this, and we're told no cause for alarm. From Bayelsa to River State, now one case in Aquaibum and then several other suspected cases, and Cross River isn't taking any chances. Now, are we about to witness another epidemic? Yes, it is an epidemic because we never had it in Nigeria before, so it's an epidemic, but it's milder than Ebola. And um, at the same time, we need to take precautions, even though it's milder, it's still a disease, and so we need to take precautions, and surveillance has to be up so that everybody that is presenting with similar symptoms can be checked and then people that do have the disease can be quarantined. Can one get monkeypox through, through injections? Well, yes, if the virus was injected, the person could get it. If the live virus was injected, the person could get it. I'm asking this because there have been insinuations that the disease outbreak is as a result of free medical care by the government in affected areas, you know, an allegation that they have refuted, saying it's sinister and fake. It's definitely fake because... But you've just said that one indeed can get monkeypox through injection. Yes, you can, but it would be unethical to be injecting people with a virus like that. So I'm definitely sure that health workers going out to do medical checks would not want to do that sort of thing and it's, it wouldn't be done. So when you say injections, sharing the same needle for example? Yes, yes. sharing the same needles, needles that have been contaminated maybe with body fluids or blood containing the virus and then deliberately, so what we're talking about is deliberately injecting it, inoculation into people. No, that wouldn't happen because it would be grossly unethical. Looking at the larger cities, um, Lagos, Abuja, um, in the country, are they at risk, you know, with regards to how this is 
spreading. Yes, we're, we're definitely Lagos. Lagos is at risk as well because people come into Lagos from everywhere, and you know it's become a, the world has become a global village. So anybody could come in. So surveillance has to be up so that we're monitoring and checking people that come in, people presenting with fever, and then health workers too also need to ensure that they keep to standard universal precautions and they're wearing gloves when they're touching blood and body fluids so that they're not infected as well. In your opinion, how does this metamorphose in vulnerable persons, children, pregnant women, people living with disability? Well, according to the World Health Organization, um, the monkeypox disease is actually could be more serious in children. So we should try and prevent children and then people probably with um, compromised immunity. So people that do not have enough immunity would also be at higher risk of um, getting severe infections from it. But monkeypox in itself, the infection from it, is relatively mild compared to smallpox, which is in the same family. Okay. Well, do you think that Nigerians have let down their guard since Ebola, especially in the area of hygiene? Because everyone is saying now, you know, we should continue with that. You know, wash your hands more often. Eat, do not eat bush meat. Yes. Yes, we, we did let down our guard because once the Ebola virus disease was over and we were um, cleared, People stopped washing their hands, and it's, um, it's not a good thing. So we should raise the standards again and actually try and keep the standards so that we keep washing our hands when we make contact with other people, when we go out and come back, and then other essential periods for hand washing as well, so that we're able to protect ourselves, not just from monkeypox virus, but also from other diseases as well. For those who are hearing about this disease for the first time, um, you know, for how long does it stay, you know, in, in its host? And then what do you think that people can do to, to prevent, to recognize it, and then what they can do next? Well, when a person gets infected or is exposed to the monkeypox virus, in the first five days, we may expect that the person will come up with symptoms like fever, headache, muscle pain, back pain, and then um, enlarged lymph nodes. And once there's a fever, within the next one to three days, then the person may now come up with the rash. And then with that rash, the rash starts and then turns into pustules eventually, which are like the smallpox ones, but say a bit larger. And then with this, we see that the, the, these may clear within three weeks. 21 days should clear off but once there are symptoms or once there's been exposure then people should report to the health facilities so that they can be properly looked after and then tests done and then they're checked and if they do have the infection then they can be isolated at what point do you isolate one if it happens to a family member well once it has once there's been exposure to the virus then the person should be quarantined if the person has been in contact with a known case of monkeypox monkey virus, then the person should be quarantined. Now, if it is now confirmed by the tests that will be done, blood samples will be sent to the lab and then tests done. So once that is confirmed, then the person should be isolated until the disease runs its course. Mm -hmm. Isolated and treated. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Mudukwe Akinka, consultant, public health physician and lecturer at the Lagos State College of Medicine, Lassicom. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. And in other news, a rights group, the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has sued the federal government over what it describes as failure to stop former governors from receiving double pay and life pensions as serving senators and ministers. SERAP is also suing the government for failure to seek recovery of over 40 billion naira of public funds received by ex-governors now serving in appointive or elected positions as public officers. The suit filed at the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos followed Serap's petition to the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice to institute legal action against the former governors. A statement signed by the organization's Deputy Director Timothy Adewali reads in part, 
that the federal government has a responsibility to stop former governors from receiving double pay at the expense of workers and pensioners. This position is buttressed by Article 27 of the Vienna Convention on the Laws of Treaties and no date has been fixed for hearing of the suit. So far, the Minister of Mines and Steel's Development, Dr. Kaede Fayemi, the Labour Minister, Dr. Chris Ngige, and the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, have denied ever receiving double payments and retirement benefits. When the news at 10 returns, Lumen Christi College in Edo State emerges winner of the 2017 Sepulchre Quiz competition.